It's fair to say that Red Bull didn't enjoy the smoothest of starts to a season given the team's perpetual reliability issues. With just three races underway, Max Verstappen was already forced to retire twice, with a late race fuel pump issue causing him to stop prematurely during the season opener in Bahrain before the same card got served to his teammate Sergio Perez, who spun out as his engine shut down just moments after Verstappen's bad fate. Australia was an even more brutal representation of the team's issues as it was once again Verstappen who was unable to see the checkered flag as he stopped his RB18 on the side of the track on lap 38, reporting smelling weird fluids and being instructed by the team to park the car in close proximity to the marshals with fire extinguishers. It just leaked a lot of petrol. That's why we said he should stop immediately, preferably where there's a fire extinguisher. The team's senior advisor, Helmut Marko, told the press just moments after the incident. And you could be sure Verstappen was fuming, calling the result frustrating and unacceptable and admitting that the championship is an extremely long shot at the moment. I think it's more important to finish races, Max said jokingly when being asked to compare his car's pace with that of Ferrari. We are already miles behind, so I don't really even want to think about the championship battle at the moment. He continued, but yeah, we didn't even finish the race, so it's pretty frustrating and not acceptable. These kinds of things, if you want to fight for the title, it cannot happen, Verstappen concluded. But it's not just reliability that seems to be on Red Bull's list of concerns, as Australia is a track tipped to suit the Red Bull car more than the Ferrari due to their greater straight line speed. But Leclerc's Ferrari was in dominant form as he pulled away into the distance, building a prodigious gap to Verstappen early in the race, with the Red Bull driver failing to catch up. Today was just a bad day again, Verstappen said. I knew that I could not fight Charles, so there was no point to try and put pressure on him. We really struggled with the tires in the race. I'm frustrated, of course, but there's nothing to be done right now," the Red Bull driver admitted as he blamed the overall lack of pace, poor balance and high tire degradation as the three underlying worries biting the team at the moment. And it was Helmut Marko who did not hesitate to share his worry about the team's current state, as he also believes Red Bull has far more issues than just reliability on their shoulders believing there are up to three deep-rooted problems the team has to get up on top of to even think about any title contention. Firstly, the reliability problems, which we hardly had any last year. But the lag behind Ferrari was also alarming today, opened up Marco. They just controlled the pace and did that without graining. If Max stepped on, Leclerc could react easily. He admitted Ferrari's pace came as a real shocker to everyone in the garage. We were negatively surprised by the speed of Ferrari. They had almost no graining and we already had after a few laps," Helmut said, referring to Verstappen's shocking call, asking for new tires with just 12 laps on his set of mediums during the Australian race. Ferrari was in a class of its own, and unfortunately, we were clearly behind, even though Perez drove a great race. But it's not just reliability and their lack of speed that is keeping the Red Bull drivers awake at night with Marco being extremely vocal about the team's issue with weight. The all-new 2022 technical regulations raised the previous minimum weight limit by 43 kilos, all the way to 798 kilograms following the switch to 18-inch tires from their 13-inch predecessors. The RB18 is rumored to currently be the heaviest car on the Formula One grid. And one doesn't need to have an Ivy League degree in physics or engineering to understand that more weight simply doesn't equate to lap time. But Red Bull hasn't left the problem unturned as Marco confirmed the RB18 will go through an intense weight loss program before the upcoming Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. We will indeed get an upgrade, said the Red Bull chief. If it functions as well as the first updates and if we can reduce the weight, we can put that package on a par with Ferrari. The team's renewed version of the RB18 for Imola is believed to be 8 kilos lighter, a loss large enough to contribute to an additional 2 to 3 tenths per lap. But cutting weight is no simple task, not just for us humans, but even more for a Formula One car, with the team's latest endeavor rounding up to over $2 million. Lowering the weight is expensive. It's, to start with, a financial issue, and secondly, it is also related to reliability so it is a difficult split due to the budget ceiling, 
We are facing difficult times, admitted the disillusioned Marco. But more importantly, we need to solve the reliability problems. You can have a fast car, but if you don't get to the finish, it's of no use, he stated. Christian Horner seems to be the most relaxed member of the Austrian team as he took the disappointment with a grain of salt and remains to see the positive signs. I'd rather fix a fast car than try to make a reliable and slow one fast, he told reporters jokingly following the Australian Grand Prix. Horner seems to be in a better mood than his counterpart, Toto Wolff, who recently labeled Mercedes' struggles as an exercise in humility and gave the Silver Arrows a 20% chance of championship success. And despite Red Bull's missed opportunities and lacking the pace of the Ferrari, Christian Horner remains ever relaxed. Even on a day when we weren't as quick as Ferrari, we had a guaranteed second place in the first two races. With Max, we've given up 36 points for the team, and for the team overall, 50 points, he said, referring to Verstappen's two retirements to Perez's one. When you look at that, both the Constructors' and Drivers' Championship would be a lot different. There's still a huge percentage of the championship to run, but we need to get on top of the issues quickly, summed up the Red Bull team principal. But when being asked about the cause of Verstappen's retirement, he confirmed the issue is not engine-related, but that he needs to wait until the car gets torn to pieces back in their Milton Keynes base for an inspection. We don't know what the issue is yet. I don't think it's actually engine-related, he admitted. I think it might be a fuel issue, but we need to get the car back. We need to be able to look at what exactly happened, Horner said, before siding with Verstappen's views on the current state of the team. As Max said, we didn't have the pace to race Shadow today. They were in a league of their own. It's frustrating not to be bagging those points, he added. With three races of the season already behind us, 2022 is shaping up to be yet another classic, just like 2010 or 2012. Ferrari have the upper hand as their F175 race car seems to be miles ahead of the rest of the field, but the Red Bull is looking mighty quick. So, if the Austrian team manages to successfully shed off 8 kilos and get on top of their reliability issues, we really could be in for a cracker this year. Imagine 2022 being just like 2010. If Mercedes get on top of its poor power unit performance and put an end to their porpoising, we could very well line up in Abu Dhabi with 3-6 to six drivers having a shot at being crowned champion. Just imagine that for a moment. But we want to know what you guys think. Do you see 2022 being a three or more way championship? And how many retirements do you think Red Bull will suffer this season? Let us know in the comments down below. We've let YouTube decide which video you would enjoy watching next the most based on your own unique watching habits and preferences. Let's see if they are right.